In this video, I'm going to show you how you can track pop-ups or model dialogues on your website with the help of Google Tag Manager. All and more coming up. Hey there and welcome back to another video of Measure School teaching you the tech tools and tactics of today's digital marketing world. Now today we want to take a look at a new tracking technique that has recently been made possible by a new trigger within Google Tag Manager. The element visibility trigger can now detect whether something is visible on the screen of the user's browser. And we want to use this today to track actual pop-ups or model dialogues that you might have on your website as well. Now we got lots to cover. So let's dive in. All right, back in our demo shop, we today want to track when somebody clicks on this quickie button and our pop-up with our quick view actually opens up. Again, if I click here on quick view, the page doesn't reload. It just opens up this new overlay or pop-up window that you see right here. So how can we track this with Google Tag Manager? Let's go over to Google Tag Manager and take a look at our available triggers. Go here on new and then click on trigger configurations. These are the different types of triggers that we can deploy. Now, the one that we will use is a new one, the element visibility trigger. Now this trigger will actually detect whether something is visible in the viewport of the screen. All you need is a way to detect whether an element is visible or not. All you need is to tell this trigger to have a look at a certain element and if it's visible to the user. In order to do this, you need to either tell Google Tag Manager the ID of this element or the CSS selector. Now you need to be a little bit familiar with HTML and CSS in order to configure this correctly. I'm going to link up some resources down below that you can check out to learn all about CSS selectors. Now the first thing that we need to do is go back to our page and actually inspect the element that is now visible to us. So this is the second state, the state when your element is actually visible. And you select the element once you see that you have your developer tools open in this elements pane, we'll see the document object model. Now here we can hover over the different nodes and select the node that we want to observe. Now there are different methods of actually doing this. I always try to go as high up as possible and see the node that actually appears on the screen. So once I close this, I see that this node actually changes. And once I go back to quick view, we have a few things that change right here. And this is what we want to observe or monitor throughout the user being on the side if this changes and then fire a tag. Now we can see here that this element actually doesn't have an ID. And therefore we need to make use of this CSS selector method that we saw in our trigger right here. So what do we implement here? Again, you need to know a little bit about how to read HTML, but also then select an element with a CSS selector, but it closely models a command that we can try out in our console itself. And this command is document dot query selector all. And here we can input the query selector with these parentheses and quotation marks. So here we have our class. And if you would say this is one class, remodel is opened. I'm just going to copy this here and implement this here. I'll put a dot in front of it because that's how you select classes. I press enter and I see I get three elements back that, that were found, these three elements here. Now, for me, this is not specific enough because I actually want to try to keep this down to one element that I should see if it's in the viewport or not. Otherwise, there might be some unforeseen effects to this trigger and therefore I will look up what else could I use. So here we have the remodel wrapper as well. So I'm going to see if that's unique. Let's copy this and put it into our CSS selector. Press enter and we see, okay, there's only one element that would be observed now. This is visible to the user. And if I click on this X button and repeat the command, I can do this by pressing the up arrow, pressing enter. I see now this element is still there, 
but it has slightly changed because the class change to remodel is closed. Now this is a strong indicator that we can use this as a CSS selector because the element is on the page. Once it changes, the, our trigger could detect this and then fire our event. So let's take this CSS selector, copy this and go back to our Google Tag Manager. And here we can implement our CSS selector, just like that. And we have different other options. When do we want to fire this trigger? Uh, once per page or once per element. Now we have different elements here on this page and therefore we should choose the once per element option. Then we can choose how much of the element should be visible. 50% is okay because it will be on the whole screen anyways. And then the important option that we need to take is the observe DOM changes. Now you can also set a time that this should actually be visible. So if you want to get rid of any mistakes when somebody clicks on view and then right away closes this, you could specify a time. We won't do this for now. And we want to observe the DOM changes. So the changes that are actually happen on the website. Now this brings up this little warning here and it warns you that monitoring these different elements might result in a diminished site performance. Now this has nothing to do with the page speed itself, um, how long it takes to actually load the page. But after the page has loaded and you have maybe multiple of these triggers running, Google Tag Manager needs to monitor all of these and therefore site performance might suffer. So just be aware of that. For us, it's not a big issue because we are only looking at really one element on the page and are monitoring that. In the end, you can also configure a filter here to say that this should only fire on certain pages or on certain elements or when there are certain products, for example, this is all configurable with variables. Now we don't have to do this because we are very specific already. And in the end, don't forget to give this a name. So visibility and that should do it. Let's save this. And now we can go into our preview and debug mode. And first of all, see whether our CSS selector was configured correctly. Go back to the page, reload that. I'm gonna click on the quick view. And we see our GTM element visibility has now fired some data into the data layer right here. So this seems to work. Let's try this out on a different quick view. And unfortunately it doesn't fire our element visibility. Um, that might be something in the trigger. Let's see. What I've done wrong here. Uh, actually, this method should be chosen if we want to fire this every time somebody clicks on the quick view button. So let's save this and try this out again. Refresh, refresh here. And we have an element visibility. We have an element visibility again. So every time somebody clicks on the quick view, this should now be something that is transferred in a data layer. And now we just need to fire a tag upon this. So all we need to do is to configure a tag. We can, for example, use a Google Analytics event tag, configure this tag with a universal analytics code. This will fire an event and we'll input a category and an action. Now, obviously we could also fill this out with some more useful information such as which product was actually opened. You could pull, for example, the name here. This is a bit more complicated because you would need to know how to pull this out of the GTM element data layer. So here we have our GTM element and you could pull this definitely out of this data layer, but this is for another video. So we'll just be fine with this. And then we just need to enter our Google Tag Manager code. We could do this through a variable or right here in the tracking ID. That's something we find in our Google Analytics account under the admin section right here. Let's use that and enter this right here. All right, and then we need to attach our trigger. Save this, refresh our page. Refresh our page here. And every time somebody clicks on the quick view, you can see our event now fires. This should also be possible 
to see in the real-time events. So here we have our quick view. This should also be then transferred under the audience, uh, no, the behavior tab and also events. And this should show up later on after about 30 minutes it takes to actually show up right here. So this all works fine. We have correctly configured this trigger. Now in order to spin this to the end, you simply need to click on the publish button here and submit a version. Give it a name and publish this so it's live on your website and you are from that moment forward tracking these quick view pop-ups on your website. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can track pop-ups or model dialogues via Google Tag Manager with this new element visibility trigger. Now, if you have any questions, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel right over there because we're bringing you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.